and welcome to a new vlog. Welcome to Monday. It is a very warm, <laughs> it is warm, it's not that bad, it's 77 at the moment, I think it's supposed to get up to, oh, 79 they're saying, we'll see about that. I think it's gonna get up to like 80, 81. It is a very warm day, but it is a very cloudy and like very moody day, so I'm loving it. It's raining off and on today, but it's gonna rain some more tonight, and then it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Today I have a lot of work to do. I really don't feel well. Like I really don't feel well. It's just that time of the month. I'm absolutely exhausted. I could not wake up this morning. It took me over an hour to finally wake up and get myself out of bed and get dressed and I've tried curling my hair and putting on some makeup to try to make myself feel a little bit more refreshed, but I don't think it's really working. So I need to set up my planner. I have a call in 20 minutes. I need to set up my planner. I'm gonna try to do that before my call so that once my call is done, I know what I'm gonna try to get done today. So part of planning is going to be really thinking about how to scale back <laughs> my plan for today. There are two things I really want to do that I meant to do yesterday on Sunday and just yesterday if you watched the last vlog ended up being a lot more active. I think that's part of why I'm not feeling good. I'm just feeling really worn down. But I do really want to put up my spring decorations and there aren't that many. My spring decor is probably the smallest of my seasonal collections. I only have one box and I've got a lot of flowers, faux flowers that I need to rearrange. So, and I can do that while I'm watching TV or something. But I want to do my spring decor and I wanna cook some chili. Um, and I wanna walk you guys through that because on the last video where I made chili, one of you asked if I could share the recipe and a few people liked that person's comment as well. So I know there's at least four of you <laughs> who would like to know my chili recipe. I feel like I have talked about it before or shown it before, but it's probably been, knowing knowing the way my brain is computing time these days, it's probably been a couple years. And I have a lot more subscribers um, than I did a couple years ago. So I will share my chili recipe again. It's super easy and it, it's really flexible. It, you can add and subtract ingredients to make it however you want. You can, I don't make it ve vegan or vegetarian. I put in meat and I melt cheese on top but you could adjust it to be vegan and vegetarian. Um, so I will talk you through that later in the vlog when I make dinner. I'll probably start that around four. So I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is keep working. I've been working slowly this morning. Um, it is about 11.15 now, so I have done some work this morning, but not as much as I need to. There's been some things I knew had to get done today, so I focused on getting those done. I've got some more work to do, so I'm gonna work on that um, and probably work until about four. Landscapers are outside, if you can hear that. Probably work until about four and then start making the chili, because I like, I like to let it simmer for at least an hour, but longer is better, because then the spices really kind of get simmered in there. Start cooking around 4, 4.30, and then while it's simmering, I can do all the spring decor, because I don't think that's gonna take me longer than an hour, because there really isn't that much. So I'm gonna stop talking, because the landscapers are getting quite noisy out there. I'm gonna get um, going on my planner while I wait for my call, for it to be time for my call. Then I will get to work on my tasks once my call is done. So that is the plan. I have a cup of coffee. Um, I've got a candle going. I've got my beautiful tulips that I bought yesterday. So I have set the mood and with the clouds, it does feel just a little bit wintry out there, which is making me really happy. So I don't feel that great physically. I'm really, really tired, but I'm still trying to like have just a really cozy, warm atmosphere and 
just get as much work done as I can. I can't take a complete day off. I can't just have a complete self-care day like I would like, but I can make adjustments to my day and not make myself do as much work as I was planning on. But yeah, enough rambling, enough talking. Time to start drinking my coffee, even though it's decaf, it still helps, and get going on my planner. <laughs> It is now 4.30. I've worked a little bit later than I thought I would. I definitely am ready to stop though. And I am ready to start cooking dinner. So it's also very windy outside. Very windy, very blustery. Still warm, <laughs> but looking outside and hearing the wind, it does sound kind of perfect to make a giant pot of chili. It just sounds like one of those days. So yeah, I should have done my dishes earlier. So I do prefer cooking in a cleaner kitchen, but I will have to do dishes in a little while after I have gotten the chili going because I just want to get that started. And as I said earlier, I am going to show you and talk you through how I make my chili. This is a recipe I got from my mom. Okay, first of all, I've got to say, I'm flattered anyone would show any interest in wanting to know this recipe. This recipe is not gonna win any chili cook-offs. It's not that fancy, but what I like about it is Unlike some of the recipes that you might find in a chili cook-off type recipe book, the really, really good chili recipes, this one's super easy <laughs> and it doesn't take a lot of time. You could make this in an hour or less. I'd say probably about an hour, 15 minutes to put everything together and at least 45 minutes to let it simmer. I'm giving myself 30 minutes to do this because I'm talking to you guys. I can normally put everything together in 15 minutes if I'm just focusing on one thing. I'm not good at multitasking. But yeah, I'm gonna let it simmer tonight for at least an hour and a half probably, which I find just allows it to really kind of, everything cooks down and all the flavors kind of blend together really well and it's just delicious. So. What I like about this recipe, as someone with a chronic illness, <laughs> and as someone who probably has undiagnosed ADHD with executive dysfunction issues, <laughs> cooking is not, I'm starting, as I'm learning more about ADHD, I'm realizing it explain, it, it would explain a lot about why I don't like cooking. I struggle with multi-step processes, so cooking where you're following a recipe, particularly when things have to be timed in a certain way. What I like about baking, and I think why I've always been good at baking, is because in most baking recipes, time isn't as much of a factor. If it takes you a while to meticulously measure out all of the ingredients, that's not gonna cause a problem with the end result. I don't bake anything that complicated, and so with cooking, I struggle if this has to be done within this time frame before you can add in these next ingredients and yeah, I get overwhelmed really easily. So one of the big things with this recipe and why I recommend it for other people with chronic illnesses, I've recommended this to friends who have kids who have to be able to kind of drop something at a moment's notice to go see who's screaming and why. This recipe is really great because you can pre-assemble 
everything and you can even pre-chop stuff earlier in the day so I didn't do that today so I'm gonna chop up some carrots but like I could chop up carrots earlier in the day and, and then just put them back in the fridge until it's time to cook. I can get all the cans opened, get everything kind of open and ready and chopped and prepared and all the spices out and know exactly which ones I'm using and then it's just a matter of dumping everything into the pot. First browning the meat and then dumping everything into the pot and so while I'm assembling things, I don't have the stovetop going, nothing is being cooked yet, and by the time I'm starting to brown the meat, everything else is out and in a line and ready to go. So then it's just dumping everything in, stirring it around, and then letting it simmer. So the actual prep, as I said, can be done in like 15 minutes once you kind of know what you're doing and that can kind of sometimes be done in your own time as far as like chopping the veggies can happen whenever you want. So I've got a little battery light so I am going to assemble everything and get those uh, carrots chopped and change my battery and then I will come back when I'm ready to start putting everything in the pot. everything assembled. So what you will need or what I have now and then I'll give you ideas. The other thing I like about this is you can add and subtract any of these ingredients for whichever ones you like, whichever ingredients you like more. You can also tailor this to be vegetarian or even vegan. The main thing that's making it not vegetarian or vegan right now is I will be putting in organic ground turkey breast. Other than that, everything is vegetables and beans and spices. And then um, the main thing that makes it not vegan when it's finished is I put cheddar cheese on top. I just think melted cheddar cheese <laughs> on top of the chili is so good. Obviously you could use a uh, vegan cheese if you wanted to do that and so it's really easily adaptable. You can also increase or decrease the amounts of ingredients to make a bigger batch or a smaller batch. I don't like cooking as I've said so when I cook I like to make enough to last me for at least four meals so I make a big pot. I have an old, I think this is Farberware. I think this is an old Farberware Dutch oven. So it's just a nice big stew pot. So whatever you have, but you are gonna want something a little bit bigger. Otherwise, you're definitely gonna want to cut this recipe into like a third. I have so 16 ounces of meat, um, which is what I get. Like that's what comes prepackaged. I'm going to be putting in two cans of beans. I have a can of pinto beans and a can of black beans. You could do one or the other. You could put any other kind of beans that you like. I have sometimes done this without the beans. I've sometimes done it just pinto or just black. So you can kind of be flexible there. I've got, I don't know, this is maybe about a cup, cup and a half of chopped carrots. I think zucchini would probably also be good in this. Corn would probably be great. I'm not a huge fan of corn in my chili, but it would probably go in there really well. So if you were trying to substitute for the meat, I would say more chopped veggies and more beans. Um, I think diced tomatoes going along with the tomato. So I gotta be careful because I've already opened it. I've got a can of tomato sauce and a can of tomato paste. I do a one in one ratio. If you wanted this to be thicker, a thicker chili, especially without having to simmer it for a really long time, I would do two cans of the tomato paste. I'm trying to think of other things you could add in. Obviously any other meat would be good. So I'm using ground turkey, ground turkey breast, but you could do ground chicken. You could do chunks of chicken. I've done that before. It's really good. So I will buy the whole chicken breast and chop it up into like 
one inch cubes, kind of bite sized pieces basically. We've done this with ground beef. So any meat that you like, you could do this with. You could also do meat substitutes. Basic ingredients are some kind of meat or protein base, what I like to do, and or beans. So the beans could also act as your meat substitute. So some kind of meat, some kind of beans. Like if I were doing this without meat, I'd probably do three cans of beans instead of two. And then up my carrots because these are the ingredients that I like. But obviously, if you are adding in some zucchini and some corn and some diced tomatoes and any other veggies and peppers, whatever you'd want to put in chili, the more of those things you're adding, the less of the other ingredients you would need. So um, if you were doing this as a vegetarian or vegan chili, then um, more beans and more veggies and you've substituted the meat. So I've got the beans, the meat, the carrots are the main kind of things within the chili, within the chili itself. And then the chili base is the can of tomato sauce, tomato paste. I will put in a little bit of white wine. My favorite thing to use is hard cider, hard apple cider. I don't have any on me. I forgot to buy some. I should have bought some at Whole Foods yesterday and I completely forgot. Today I will use a little bit of white wine. I will then add water to get it up to the volume that I want. And then spices. I will start off by browning the meat with salt and pepper as well as olive oil. And then once, and I'll probably do a little bit of garlic powder and chili powder while the meat is browning. And then once all the beans and carrots and tomato sauce and everything is in there, I will then add more salt, more pepper, more garlic powder, cayenne, chili powder, crushed red pepper, and paprika. I like to season the meat as it's browning, and then I season the chili once all the other ingredients have been mixed in, if that makes sense. So this is pretty much how I get it set up before I start cooking. So I've got the beans, the meat, um, this is what I will use to brown the meat. I've got um, the tomato sauce, I've got my carrots, and I've got all my spices, and then I've got my pot. So I make sure that everything is open and ready to go, and I know that I've got everything that I need. I've shown you these cans, so I can now throw these away. Now it's time to put, it's hard to do this one-handed, so I put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan to cook the meat. Do a little bit of salt in there. It's hard to do pepper while I'm vlogging. So a little bit of pepper. So I put all of that in the base of the pan so that when the meat goes in, the bottom side of the meat will all get spices. Do a little bit more on the top side of the meat and then I start breaking it up and browning it. So I need to open up the ground turkey. As you've probably noticed, I still haven't turned on the oven. So if I needed to sit down for a second, if I've forgotten something, I can still step away from the stove and not have to worry. So put the meat in. So I'm gonna put my stove burner, I've got it on the big burner in front. I'm gonna put it up to about eight. So I want to put a little bit more pepper, a little bit more salt, and then I want to do some garlic powder on the meat and some chili powder on the meat. So that's what I use to start cooking the meat. I will do all of the spices again once I add in the sauce but I like seasoning the meat as I'm cooking it. And so now it's just getting the meat browned and cooked most of the way through. It'll finish cooking as it simmers, but I like getting a nice kind of browning going on the meat. Sorry, if you can hear that, my stove burner squeals. I don't know why. They tell me this stove is normal, but it makes more noise than any stove or oven I have ever had. So it's starting to sizzle a little bit, so it's going to cook. We're going for browned, not burned. But once I see that it's starting to get that like brown crispiness, I'll add in a splash of wine and then start adding in all the liquids. And then I'll add in the carrots and the beans. And then I'll add in the spices. So I will try to show you bits of that. 
but there's not much more to say, so I'm gonna turn my audiobook back on and get this cooking. Okay, everything is now in there, and I'm just going to leave this on probably five for now, so medium, while it comes back up to a bit of a bubble, and then I'll turn it down to like two or three to let it simmer for as long as I want. So I've just added in all of the spices. I don't like my chili super spicy, <laughs> so I go heavier on the garlic powder the black pepper and the chili powder, and then do a little bit of the cayenne, a little bit, paprika doesn't have spice, but I don't want to overwhelm it with paprika, just like a little bit of paprika for flavor. And as far as spice, I do a little bit, like I used, this was a half teaspoon, I didn't even do a half, half of that, so slightly less than a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne, and I just put, again, like half of a quarter of a teaspoon of the crushed red peppers because I don't like mine that spicy. When my mom makes this, she does jalapenos because my dad loves super spicy things. So I like to call my version of the chili, chili for picky people. If you're someone like me who's not that big on veggies and doesn't like a whole ton of like different things, this is how I make chili so that it's all the things that I like and I could eat this and I will eat this for the rest of the week. So this is making a really big pot. This is probably gonna feed me for the next five days. It can last a really long time. Or if you're having a lot of people over, then you can have, this will feed a large group of people. So it will feed one person for at least four or five nights, It will, or it will feed four or five people or more. The more um, extra add-ins you have, and depending on how you serve it, so, you can serve this with tortilla chips. You can make pasta and mix that in. I tend to vary it depending on the night. So tonight I'll probably just have this with chips, but tomorrow I'll probably heat up some pasta and mix that in and do like a chili macaroni bake kind of a thing. You could do this with like crusty bread. So there's lots of different ways you can serve this up that can also make the chili stretch a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna, it's starting to steam. It's gonna start Oh, I even think I see some bubbles. So it's starting to bubble, so I'm just going to go over to the other side of the room, start doing my spring decorations, which was something I wanted to do today. So I'll probably work on that for the next 40 minutes until 6 o'clock, and then periodically I'll just come back and check on it. So if it starts bubbling too much, you want to turn it down, you want a little bit of bubbling and simmering, but not boiling. So I'll just keep an eye on that while I'm putting up my spring decorations, even though it's also kind of looking and sounding very much like winter outside. Looks like, looks like the wind. Oh, I think it's starting. Oh, it's raining. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's raining. This definitely feels like winter. I think it has cooled down. It is 70, but it's going to be really humid because of the rain. It feels like chilly weather. It doesn't feel like spring decor weather, but I am still going to put my spring stuff up because tomorrow it's still going to be rainy tomorrow, but then Wednesday it's going to be like 75 and full sun, and then it goes back up into the 80s. So I want to get the spring stuff up now so I can enjoy it once it does start feeling more like spring, but oh, it's raining. Oh, it's so nice. Rain in the desert 
is an absolutely magical thing. stopped raining now I hear it starting to rain again just a little bit it's just such a nice evening <laughs> I am absolutely loving it it's feeling very cozy in here I've got all the candles going but it's also feeling very bright and fresh very floral in here <laughs> lots of flowers and the chili is pretty much done it is been simmering for a while it's now 10 minutes to 7 so it simmered for a little bit longer but I was getting so close to getting to a good stopping point with the spring stuff and now I'm ready to just sit down eat a delicious bowl of chili and just relax for the rest of the night so all I need to do is grate up some extra sharp cheddar cheese that is what I like to put on my chili I hope you've enjoyed seeing all of my spring decor and working with me earlier today and I feel like the big part was cooking the chili so I hope you enjoyed that let me know if you make it following my recipe and how you change it I'd love to know how people change it to reflect their own personal tastes and preferences that is what I love about chili in particular but also this recipe. I also would love to know as our question of the vlog, do you have a family recipe that you learned from your family and then have adapted to yourself? Or what is just your favorite comfort food on a rainy, drizzly, kind of moody evening like it is today here for me? So those are some questions you can answer. I'd love to know. If you enjoyed this vlog, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not subscribed, all of that great stuff. I am now gonna go get my chili and go sit down and relax and have a lovely, cozy, relaxing evening. And yeah, I will see you all very soon in the next vlog. Thank you very much for watching this one. Bye.